In this video, we're going to talk specifically about how to prime the skin using infinite skin. And but what I mean by that is, let's say you have an image like this by a wonderful portrait and headshot photographer, Greg Thomason, who I absolutely loved his images and um, really are impressed by this particular example as well, because what you find sometimes is, um, you know, lenses are very sharp. And what happens is you might get a lot more detail than you really even want to retouch. Well, priming the skin um, and using the panel is a great way to kind of mat it out so that there's a lot less detail to edit. It almost looks like a really good foundation. And the beauty of infinite skin here is that we're able to keep the structure of the face using the tool. So it's not going to, you know, also change a lot of the structure of the face. So what I pretty much recommend is two different workflows. You can prime it here in the beginning. Um, and then once it's kind of evened out a little bit, then begin your retouch. Because then what happens is <clears throat> your healing brush itself is a lot easier to use. And the retouching process becomes a lot more satisfying and easy to use because you're not seeing as much detail. There's a lot less contrast in the skin, especially in the pore level. And things just tend to blend better. And visually speaking, it also looks like a, a much smoother skin. So that's kind of what the goal is here. So let's go ahead and... Uh, come over to infinite skin first. And what I'm going to do by default is bring everything to the left. And if you haven't seen the full tutorial on infinite skin, please check out our website at infinite-tools.com. And there you'll be able to see um, the main video going over this from start to finish. So if you are curious about this and want to learn more, check it out. And uh, that way I won't have to explain every single thing here uh, at this current time. So firstly, I'm going to ensure that my black mask icon is enabled and uh, my highlight protection is enabled because I want my highlights to be visible and not flattened out. And I want the contours still to be there. And of course, if you don't check it, what will happen is um, the highlights will smooth out a little bit as well. But uh, for now, let's just keep it on. And I don't have to actually modify any of these existing settings because I've manually overrid them like this. If I did light, you'll see that it keeps the clarity to the right, which means that the texture and pore detail is more prominent or stays as prominent as you see here. However, I want to keep it to the left because I want the texture detail to soften as well. And so I'm going to do that, hit create and give it a few seconds. And what it's going to do is it's going to generate our layer stack. And uh, from there, we'll, we'll take it from there with a mask, which it adds. And now simply put, I'm going to use my standard brush tool. I'll go over to flow of 100%. I'm going to bring my brush up like this. And before you begin brushing, I highly do recommend keeping your hardness at 0%. Okay, so it just keeps the edges of the brush very smooth. And I'm using the standard brush tool. I'm not using the art history brush or their color replacement brush or the mixer brush. It is the standard brush tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and start brushing. Whoops, <laughs> with white, I should say. I don't want to make any rookie mistakes here. And you can see right off the bat, right? You can see the detail here being kind of just blended together a little bit more. It keeps that structure there of the skin, but it keeps the pore level detail really soft. And if you want to bring this in really delicately, you can. And I also recommend that if you are unsure of the terrain that you're going to be going on, you can keep the flow to around 10%. And then begin working because as you begin brushing, you get a visual feedback of how far you want to go. Because sometimes you might not want to go to 100, you might want to add just a little bit here and there, right? So, that is the best way to go about that. Use a low flow if you are not sure of how much to bring in or smooth, because then you get the control over just how much you are going to be smoothing each area. And when I say smoothing, I am using a very all encompassing word to. Um, talk about texture detail independently from the detail here, which is going to be blending of the midtones, or, or I should say the um, highlights to the shadows. So this is detail here. And then this one here at the bottom is going to be blending of colors between the shadows and highlights. But I have it all to the left at the moment. I'm just brushing it all in and priming the skin. I'm not going to go too far up because I'm just using this as an example. So I don't have to worry too much about it. If you want to see 
um, where you have or have not brushed, just use the backslash button on your keyboard that is above enter on at least um, US keyboards. I know some keyboards out there around the world have a different shortcut for that. So please check and uh, see what it is for you. Because for me, what happens is it turns this image red and red shows me where I have not brushed yet and white shows me where I still need to brush. And you don't need to do this. This is not something you have to do. It's just for me showing you that I've actually done the work. But visually, when I'm actually working, what I would do is just brush over areas. And if I feel like that's been enough work, I'll just stop there and uh, continue working. But again, being using this as a primer, let's take a look at this. I'm going to turn my group off and on. And you can see the difference here. You can see how I was able to just soften those pores up a bit, you know. And what happens is now that the colors are also blended a little bit more together, just because the contrast is mitigated, it becomes easier to heal. It almost feels like there's more space that you can select from, you know. It's almost like using those um, haze filters in a way where detail starts to kind of fade out, but you can still make out the make out exactly what it is. And based on kind of the settings that we've used in Infinite Skin, we've ensured that it's not possible to go too far. You know, some programs might often go too far and you just keep going because you get carried away. This has a nice kind of range that it can go to. So for me, I think that's good. If you feel like perhaps too much texture detail has gone, just increase the clarity slider and you can increase it like this. I personally prefer just clicking where I want it to go rather than dragging the slider. Um, and I think that also allows me to ensure that every time I click on it, I get uh, visual feedback immediately rather than trying to drag back and forth. And sometimes dragging back and forth might be a little bit slower or might not stick settings wise. Um, and if you find that if you're dragging the slider and for some reason uh, it doesn't render the results, just double click on the slider and it will just update for you. Just a quick note about that. But yeah, you can see here that for me personally, I just prefer keeping to the left like that because I want to bring those details together. And smoothing is what I do secondarily rather than primarily because this is where I decide that if I want to go even further. And if I do, if I increase this slider here, it's going to um, kind of update with more smoothing than maybe necessary. So you can see if I go from left to right, you can see the amount of smoothing that it will further apply. And what this is doing again is it's zooming out a little bit and showing you, you know, what it would look like if the contrast between the brightest and the darkest areas were were smoother or flattened out a little bit more in terms of tonality. And the combination of the texture detail and those transitions are kind of what create the effect of smoothing. And because we're keeping, you know, the shape of the face really prominent, um, I personally leave that as second. And that's why I keep my clarity to the left. But you can see here that for me, I think this is a great base uh, to use as a primer. And then I want to personally use a blank layer to begin healing. And that's when if I use my healing brush now and begin working, it becomes something that is quite easier to do. And I feel like there's just more spaces to select and you can spend less time on the actual texture of the skin. And also think about this way, when you zoom out and you turn it on and off, the differences are even more apparent because you're not focusing at the pore level. At the pore level, the texture is still there, but when you're zoomed out like that, you can see that the results are even better. It softens up also hard lines as well, which is fantastic. So I just thought I'd mention that in the last bit. But I hope you found this tutorial useful. Again, please check out our website for more tutorials and a overview of Infinite Skin as a whole. And please join our community at Infinite Tools. We love to see you.